In this next section, we're going to be looking at labour costs. Now, we're going to consider a number of different things in this section, um, but what we are really focusing on is the labour costs in relation to our production line workers. There's a number of different labour systems um, that may be used to pay our production line workers. And in addition, we're going to have to consider whether the labour cost would be considered direct or indirect. Remember, when we were looking at cost classifications in previous sessions, when we looked at our labour costs, we said that the only time we would ever have a direct labour cost was in relation to our production line workers. So we're just going to explore this a little further in this section. So when we're thinking about our production line workers and the labour costs associated with them, the first thing we are going to consider are payment systems. So there's more than one different system which we may use to pay our production line workers. We may have an hourly system. So we pay them by the hour. If we are paying our production line workers by the hour, then presumably we may need to consider some overtime premium if they work after 5 o'clock. The other system we may have is piece rate. If we pay our staff based on a piece rate system, then that means instead of paying them by the hour, we are paying them per unit they produce. Now in either of these two pay systems, we may have to consider any bonuses we pay our production line workers and also is there a minimum wage in place. So that will be our first section of this labour costs area looking at the payment systems and the different considerations within that. Once we understand the different payment systems that might apply then we are going to look at splitting out our labour costs into direct and indirect costs. So, for the rest of this se session then, we're going to consider payment systems. And what we're going to do next is have a look at these different payment systems that might apply and how that cost behaviour would appear on a graph. So, let's have a look at our first example of a payment system. Okay, so we're told, first of all, an individual is paid $8 per hour for the first 40 hours in a week. So, this is an hourly-based payment system. An overtime premium is of $4 is paid for additional hours worked. Okay, now before we get into looking at how this system works and what our graph might look like, I want us to consider this overtime issue. For their basic hours, they get $8 an hour. This is their basic rate. If they go above 40 hours, so for overtime hours, there will be two components to the rate they get paid. For their overtime hours, they will still get the basic rate of $8, but in addition to their basic rate of $8, they will get their overtime premium of four dollars. So the total overtime rate is twelve dollars. 
If we were to look at this particular payment system on a graph, what would we find? Well, let's have a look. On our graph, we're going to show the total wages on the y-axis and the hours worked on the x-axis. So this is very similar to the cost behavior graphs we looked at in earlier sessions, but this time our level of activity is hours worked. So our first question is then, what will this individual's total wages be when their level of activity is zero or when they don't work any hours? Well, presumably, their total wages, if they don't work any hours, will be zero. After that, we know they are going to get paid $8 an hour for the first 40 hours. So, for the first 40 hours, their total wages will increase at $8 per hour. What happens when they go above 40 hours per week? Well, once they go above 40 hours, their total rate increases. So now they're being paid the basic rate of 8 plus that overtime premium. So once they go above the 40 hours, their total wages will continue to increase, but they will increase now at a faster rate. So now they're getting $12 per hour. So our hourly system in relation to our production line worker is like a variable cost, where our variable cost per hour increases above 40 hours. Okay, that's our first payment system. Let's move on to our second exercise. So, we're told in this exercise then, an individual is paid $2.50 for the first 50 units produced and $3 for any units produced in excess of this. So, this is a piece rate system where we have a differential piece rate, meaning their rate goes up once their production goes above a certain level. So let's think about what their total wages will be at a number of different levels of activity. Well, if they produce 40 units and they haven't gone above the threshold where the higher rate applies, so they're just going to get $2.50 for each of those 40 units. So their total wages then will be 100. If their production increases to 50 units, again, They'll just get $2.50 for each of those 50 units. So that'll give them a total of 125. Now what happens if their level of activity goes up again to maybe 70 units? Now we know they're going to get paid the $2.50 for the first 50 units, but they'll get $3.50 for each of the 20 additional units. So their total wages will be 250 for the first 50 units plus 20 units at $3 each. So their total wages will now be $185. Again, we just want to have a look to see how this appears then on a graph.
So again, we'll show their total wages on the y-axis. And we're going to show their level of activity on the x-axis. But now if it's a piece rate system, then their activity will be the number of units they produce. So, how much will they get paid when they produce zero units? Based on what we've been told, zero units means zero wages. Once they start producing units, they'll get $2.50 for each unit produced, up to 50 units. So, for our first 50 units, the total wages will increase at a rate of $2.50 per unit. After they go beyond this level of activity, their rate is going to increase. So once they go above the 50 units level, their total wages will increase at a rate of $3 per unit. And that's our differential piece rate payment scheme. The last thing we want to consider is what we do when we have a minimum wage in place, or how does this affect the cost behavior. We're told then, for this final individual, they are paid $2 for each unit produced. However, a minimum wage of $190 per week applies. So no matter what, this person will always get at least $190. Now again, we want to consider what will their total wages be at a number of different levels of activity. So, let's say then this individual produces 50 units. If we calculate then what will their total wages be based on the piece rate scheme, it will be 50 by $2, so they have earned $100. But are they going to be paid $100? Well, no. If the employee has earned less than the minimum wage, then what they are going to get is the minimum wage. So the total wages paid will be 190, because this is the minimum wage. And the employee has not done enough to earn more than that. If we look at another level of activity, 75 units, then they will have earned 75 by 2, so 150. In that case, their total wages will still be the minimum wage of $190. Let's move the level of activity up a bit. We'll say they produce 150 units. Now what will they get paid? Let's look at how much they've earned based on their piece rate. They've produced 150 units. Multiply by 2 gives us 300. Now this employee is not going to get the minimum wage. They've produced so many units they have earned far more than that. So instead of 190, the employee will get $300. When a company has a piece rate scheme with a minimum wage, then the employee will always be paid the higher of the salary they have earned through their activity or the minimum wage. Let's look at this final one on a graph then. So now we have a piece rate scheme with a minimum wage. Again, we'll look at total wages on the y-axis. 
and level of activity, in this case units produced, on the x-axis. So we'll ask our first question then. When the level of activity is zero, what will the total wages for the employee be? Well, if their level of activity is zero, so they don't produce any units, then the minimum wage is going to apply. Because remember, they will get paid the higher of the wages they have earned or the minimum wage. So our minimum wage was 190. We have to pay this to them even when level of activity is zero. So a minimum wage then is effectively a fixed cost for the company. What happens as their level of activity increases? Well, as we saw when we calculated a few numbers, um, when they produce 50 units, their, their total wages will still be the minimum wage. Same applies when they produce 75 units. So, as our level of activity increases, up to a certain point, the employee will still only be receiving the minimum wage. Once their activity gets to a certain level, they will then have earned more than the minimum wage. Once they get to this level, their total wages will start to increase at a rate of $2 per unit. And they are our different labour systems.